at Annecy, France, and died at the age of 72 on 30th September 1862. He was the son of a person who belonged to a land owning family of good standing. From his father, he inherited the qualities of a person, namely good sense, practical mind, prudent audacity, tenacious and calm perseverance. His mother was born into a family blessed with an ancestry of eminent lawyers and illustrious clerics and was brought up in an institution of the recitation. Since many of you might be coming across our founder Father Peter Mary Mom here for the first time, I thought of sharing about him a bit in seven points. First, he was a missionary with many qualities. He was at once extremely kind but very firm. A man at once carefully prudent and yet unusually bold. A man intensely active and at the same time intensely prayerful. He was a humble and reflective man possessed by a strength from on high. Secondly, he was a missionary who founded two congregations, Sisters of the Cross of Shavanoth and Missionaries of St. Francis the Saints. MSW's congregation was founded on 24th October 1838 with the apostolates of Irish Mission, Education of the Youth and Boring Missions. A tiny seed planted by our father Peter Mary Mamir has grown up as a huge tree today. The duty of this tree is to give shade to the people who come under this tree, to give abundant fruits to the needy, keeping the environment provision free. He used to say, we do a lot by doing a little, if we do it for God, when and as He wills. We do a lot by doing a little, if we do it for God, when and as He, wish, as he wills. Thirdly, he was a missionary who was a tireless worker. He had activities of his two congregations, besides parish missions, parish retreats and other exercises. And within the seven years of foundation of MS service in Annecy, France, on 10th of May 1845, the propaganda assigned a foreign land to MS service, which is Isaiah Province. And within a month, on 5th June, the first batch of six MS service left for India in the first seven years of foundation. And after 88 days of travel in the boat, they reached Pondicherry on 8th September 1845. And Father Mamiya sent 26 fathers and 5 brothers to India while he was alive. He tells us, do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Fourthly, he was a missionary full of love and concern for others. He had acquired a keen insight into the Salvation doctrine of the primacy of love. His portrait, as you see on the Backdrop gives us the impression of someone who is severe and with little feelings. Severe he certainly was with himself because of a wholehearted response to what God was asking from him. But this severity is softened by his humaneness and sense of humor, by an unusual thoughtfulness and by a kindly respect for persons and their shortcomings. One of his first companions, Father Petit Jean, says this about him. Father Mamiya, who appeared to be the sternest of all, was the one who was the most cheerful. He used to make everyone feel at ease. A founder used to say, don't refuse any office, any kind of work, however lowly it may be in itself, however off-putting it may appear. Obedience and love of God change everything in the world. Fifthly, he was a missionary who was totally imbued with the spirituality of St. Francis the Saints. Humility, abandonment to God, serenity were the three basic elements of salvation spirituality which Father Mamir put into practice. A founder used to say, Our ministry requires that each one of us is seen by the people as another St. Francis the Saints, totally unselfish, burning with zeal for the salvation of all and full of compassion. 
Sixthly, he was the missionary who lived as a loving child of Blessed Virgin Mary. Our mommy says, Among the innumerable favors I received daily from this good mother, I count the most notable to have been time to see how I stand before God and men. Mary taught me to be a different man, humbler, gentler, more mortified, more retiring, more religious. I can say, in short, that the Russian Virgin practically forced me and continues to force me to be entirely false and entirely healed. And lastly, he was a missionary, committed to the Lord through a life of prayer, whose life revolved around the Eucharist. Blindness deprived Father Mamir of the comfort of celebrating Mass during the last two years of his life. Yet, always, he was the first that the spiritual exercises made him calm. He continued to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and many a times attending two Masses when he was not able to celebrate by himself. After introducing our founder on our foundation, once again I welcome all of you and I request Father J. Stephen to begin to lead us into the Eucharistic celebration. So let us pray. Almighty and ever living loving God, as we commemorate the anniversary of the death of our founder, Father Peter Murray, we are here. May we be inspired by his spirit, example, and teaching. May the spirit aware of our mission, totally unselfish and dedicated full of compassion and love, enable us to offer ourselves to the service of the Church, the society and the people. May we seek your kingdom of justice and peace and the salvation of all. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, for God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A uh, reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verses 17 to 24. Now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elder of the church to, to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourself know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the course of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greek of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit Testify to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I will finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. The word of the Lord. My dear fathers, sisters, and my dear friends and family here, wish you all happy for this day. Thank you. Soon after the French Revolution, uh, this was the time our founder Mermil was born. There was a kind of 
or a period of anti-clericalism in France. The priests and the religious were chased out of the country, and the priests and the religious were underground. The absence of pastors left the faithful and care. It led to a difference of faith and a difference to religion. Mamio, who was born at this time, but was in 1790, grew up and became a priest. La Shakla is a hill town, and today maybe four or five hours drive from the city of Annecy in France. For the Mermier, at the age of 30, was appointed as the parish priest of Shatla for the first time. Prayer to Father Mermier, there was a parish priest called Father Brand, who took voluntarily transfer because of the hardness of the parishioners. In a few days of his arrival, Father Mermier, set our work with all enthusiasm. To an extent, his friends had to moderate it. He visited the families, he gathered the people, taught catechism. There was no school in the parish, so he started a school in his own presbytery, and he went on foot to visit the neighboring mountain called Yule, to teach the children because the children could not come to the parish school. <coughs> and happily, success did not repay his hard work and efforts. He finds the people in a pathetic state of mind of indifference and ignorance of faith, although sufficiently wealthy. <laughs> but he did not give up. He heard about a missioner who conducted the parish missions to revive the parishes. The famous one at that time in the area of Savoy was Father Joseph Paul, who was a zealous priest, highly intelligent and creative but embarrassing and strong-headed. Father Mermier invites Father Joseph Fowl to preach missions to Shatla. <clears throat> the response of the people in the first eight to nine days were negative. Chapter with only a very few attending it. Father Peter Mermier thinks about it and suggest to Father Joseph Paul, let us give up the mission. But Father Joseph Paul replied instead, inviting him, come along, let us pray to God for the conversion of your people. Thus, Father Peter Gombier and Joseph Paul set on foot to the neighboring mountain called Lagran Shatru to a Carthusian monastery to fast and pray for the conversion of the people. The people, the pastors came to church on the following day. They found the priest missing. There was a talk, confusion in the parish. What the priest of God? One, first day, second day, third day. Then they slowly learned that the priest moved to the neighboring hills to pray, to fast for the conversion of their heart. That the people went in search of this priest to the hills. They found them after a few days and brought them back to the church. Struck by the sacrifice and the attitude of this priest, the people in large numbers gathered to the church, came to church. Thus, the mission was very successful. 
Dear brothers and sisters, this Shatna experience was an important one in the life of Father Peter Murphyer because this Shatna experience became the foundation for the congregation of the missionaries of St. Francis of Jesus. Father Murphyer was convinced the parish mission preaching did convert the sleeping faith of the Catholics formed a group of missionaries and continued it even outside the area of Savoy. Now, Father Murphy was well known for his mission preaching and there were many priests who joined him. So they now lived together as a family, as a group and they had a prayer together. They lived like a community. That's not only Father Peter Murphy things of this group of missionaries getting approved as a religious congregation. And knowing this, many joined him. There was a big team. But the approval was, approval was delayed, delayed. Now by this time, the bishop requested them to continue their community life of giving the approval immediately. Now, the group, the missionaries left one by one and at the end, there were only three left with the Father Murphyer. And one among the three also wanted to leave. Then he says to that particular priest, my friend, you are free, make your choice, which side you should take. If you live after 10 years of my trials, I will stand alone. My soul is unshakable. My longing is the same. I want missions. Dear brothers and sisters, the Shakta experience will remain always a turning point in the life of Father Peter Murphyer for three reasons. The first, he obtained a good friend and a guide in Father Joseph Paul. Second, the conviction that the parish mission preaching was the way of fighting indifference and debility of faith of the people. And the third, an important one, the power of prayer as a key to success of the mission. It was the power of prayer that made me believe that converted the stone-hearted people into the dwelling place of God. It was the power of prayer that gave confidence to Father Murphyer that he gathered missionaries to preach the mission and then to found a congregation. It was the power of prayer which moved him to found again another congregation, the Sisters of the Holy Cross of Shaolin. My dear brothers, sisters, my friends, priests, sometimes you wonder, we are not blessed. We ask why God is not hearing my prayer. Why my prayers are not answered? We tend to lose confidence in prayer, to lose confidence in God. We slowly blame ourselves and the situation and finally God for the circumstances in which we are living. Questioning why it is happening, why it is not happening. The life experience of Father Peter Murphyer, who formed two major congregations, the congregation of the missionaries of St. Pius Bishops, the Sisters of the Holy Cross of Shaolin, teaches us today that power of prayer as a key to success of our mission. We read in the letters to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 35 to 36. Do not throw away your confidence. You need endurance to do the will of God and to receive the blessings that God has promised you. Do not, do not throw away the confidence. Endure, persevere in prayer until you receive 
the blessings that God has promised for you. Never give up. One of the life principles in the life of Father Peter Murphy was never give up. And this never give up is the whole theme of the Bible. That is the experience of many saints, your founder and my founder. And that is the teaching of the catechism of the church. Never give up. We find numerous examples in the Bible. When our people faced with difficulties and problems, they would never give up. They moved on. We find in Exodus chapter 7, Moses fears that Amalek is waging war against Israel. He sends Joshua and his troop to fight against her. Though they are not that strong, fight against the Amalek. And what did Moses do? He took Aaron and Kuhn with a staff and goes up the hill. He prays, he prays raising the hands and we lead. Whenever he raised the hands, the Joshua and team, his army were progressing. Whenever, whenever he lowered his hands, we read Amalek was winning the battle. At a point of time, we read that he was tired. His hands were weary. He could let go lift the hands. So they put a stone under him. He saw on that. And Aaron on one side and who on the other side supported his hands in prayer. He prayed till the night was hot. And the lead, Joshua went the back. Moses would never give up. Though he was tired, he could not continue, he would never give up praying. And the result, he they won the battle. The same perseverance in prayer was seen in the life of Elijah. He was praying for three and a half years for rain. Three and a half years would never give up. At the end of three and a half years, it will rain. We see in the life of the St. Paul, when he was in the prison, he experienced the circumstances were against him. He could do nothing. But he would never give up. He prayed, Lord, put me out of this prison. Bring me, bring me out. I will preach your word boldly. He would never give up. He prayed and he was brought up. What about now? Jesus the Lord? He had the guest of men. Fighting against the will of God, wanted to throw away the suffering, was praying, praying. He would never give up. Even at the darkest moment of his life, he was praying. He was praying until he accepted the will of God. He would never give up. In the first book of Samuel, chapter 12, verses 23, we read Prayerlessness is sin. Not to pray is sin. We don't pray because we don't have time. We don't pray because we don't have time. Not because we don't have time. We are not spiritual. We are not attached to God. We are not drawn by Jesus. We don't hear Jesus. Therefore, we are not spiritual. We don't pray. St. Francis, he says, when he speaks, speaks about this prayer, he says, commitment to live a devout life is devotion. He gives the example of or the image of honeybees for prayer. The honeybees, you know, you fly everywhere. They go around, but they never sit on fashion things. They never sit on ugly things. They sit on flowers. At the end, they sit on flowers. What they produce? They produce honey. He asked, where is your heart? Where is your heart? He said, all. Your heart is set on ugly things, fashion things, or on the Eucharist. When your heart is set on the Eucharist, on the Lord, you produce what? Honey of devotion. 
honey of faith. When your heart is set on Eucharist, on the Lord, what may come? You never give up. The whole situation may come against you. Your companions may let you down. You were disappointed, depressed, left to loneliness, rejected. Don't worry, you would never give up. Because you are, the heart is set on the Lord. You would never give up. You would enter, you would persist in prayers until you receive the blessings that has been promised by the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, what is lacking? Do you feel that you lack in faith? Do you feel that your faith is not sufficient to move the mountain? Do you feel that you are waiting in some insufficient for the success of the mission you have taken? Then, pray like the apostles. Lord, increase my faith. Pray, Lord, increase my faith. But again, not the signs and the volume of faith that matters, but living out the faith that we have that which matters. Live out the faith you have received in baptism. Live out the faith that you have received to your profession. Live out the faith you have received to your ordination. Live out the faith that you are born to face the mountains, the mountains of problems, the mountains of struggle in your life. You are born enough to face the mountains, talk to the mountains. Then you see them. You never give up, but find yourself successful. Dear brothers and sisters, today's celebration, the Founders Day, the life of Father Peter Murphyer, invites us to activate the faith that is instilled in us in baptism. Activate the faith to receive the blessings that are being promised by the Lord. To activate the faith. To, our, to live our religious life. That God be praised. Live Jesus. Amen. Together with these offerings, Lord accept us, all we are present, the congregation, the church, and the whole creation. As you change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, the peace and sacrifice offered to you. May we become a living sacrifice dedicated and pleasing to you. May our love of our renunciation be total and generous, have a love for coming, have a love for We ask the Christ our Lord.
respected fathers, sisters, and my dear friends. We are the MCs of the day. I am Novis Amantikka. And I am Novis Amantis. A warm welcome.
dear friends, we all have seen people welcoming their guests with speech, songs and dance. But here our brothers surprised us with a unique item. Let us thank the brothers by clapping our hands. Muskurahat ka koi mol nahi mota. Muskurahat ka koi mol nahi mota. Kuch rishno ka koi tol nahi mota. Log to mil jate hai har mol par. Lekin har koi aap ki tarah al mol nahi mota.
Commission House and in the three pillars of the organization. For the last 25 years, I seen the photos they are placed. Uh, so many have gone and so many have become provincials and superiors of this house. So I just once again thank you all for your presence here. On behalf of all uh, our superior general for Abraham Vigilating and his superior members, I thank you very much. Thank you sincerely. We also appreciate the premises. We have 24, right? So 24, what is missing? <coughs> 24 plus this year, 25. So thank you so much. You are good to come. I know you are, I have seen you working day and night. Uh, no night you are working and you are singing, dancing, uh, everything. So you have done beautifully and hats off to you all. So thank you. Also I think Father has and brothers have prepared lunch, right? Uh, if you are, they are not happy people from outside, yes, we they want preparation. Thank you all for preparing as much as you. So once again, thank you all. There is no inspiration, there is no talk, there is no message. But only thank you. Thank you so much. For <laughs>
you dear brothers for your beautiful song. Let us once again give them a round of applause. We have reached almost the end of our program. But before we end, I would like to invite our reverend Father Roshan Dasotchus, the assistant of his master, to come forward and propose a word of science.
who was assistant nurse master for two years in this medicine, the state of It is he who has taken effort to teach gifts for the day. He is a good dancer. He is a cheerful person and is a very good cook. Whose preparations we are going to enjoy and he is a gifted by God, God with many more talents. He has contributed with his talents a lot to this community. Thank you, dear father. Thank you wholeheartedly and God bless you. 